Today, we're going to check out Adobe Illustrator's 2022's workspace. Find out where the tools are, the panel, the document, panning, moving, the basic tools. We're going to check everything out. So the next time you open Adobe Illustrator, you know how to modify your layout, change the way you like it. Let's follow along on the computer and see what we can and cannot do in Adobe Illustrator 2022. Have fun. All right, so let's explore the workspace. I am now in Adobe Illustrator. And so the first thing is the workspace. If you go to window and workspace, we're going to go one by one. Automation opens this with actions, links, documents, variables. You have all your stuff here. Workspace essentials. You see how the panels change, the tools change. Workspace essentials classic. Poof, again, things are modified. Workspace layout, workspace painting, printing and proofing, tracing, typography, and web. These are the default layouts that may be perfect for you, but if you need to modify them, you can do that as well. So for the time being, I'm going to go to layout and this will keep things clean and simple. And in order for all of us to see the same thing, you may have modified your layout already. So what you want to do is you go to workspace and reset the layout, which will reset your layout to the default so that if you have modified anything, you can actually save yourself the trouble of having to fix it. You go to the default layout by doing so. And this way we can all see the exact same thing. All right, so your workspace is very basic. You have on top here the application bar. That's all the application controls right there, depending on everything that you touch. You see it changes the application bar to match what you're doing. So if we do text, it has the text. If we do shape, it brings the shape. This is the application bar. I'm going to remove this. This is your toolbar. This down here is your status bar. This is the document window. And these here are the panels. All of these are the panels. The bottom here, your status bar, is where you have your zooming and navigation controls. Now let's start with the toolbar. You see that you have some tools here. That's really not all there is on Adobe Illustrator. You can have so many more tools. All the tools are available here. When you click on those three little dots, edit the toolbar, you have a bunch of extra tools available. You can move the toolbar away from the side. You can also click on that little double arrow and it turns into a double column. If you click back on the arrow, it's just one column, two column. If you click on the three little dots, you see more of the tools that are available. You can see them as icons. You can show them as lists. And this is a list of all the tools. If you float your tools and click on the X, there is no way for you to get back the tools. And that could be a problem because believe me, you want access to those tools. So you go to window and toolbars, and then you just click on either basic or advanced. So we're going to go for basic. Your toolbar is back. You are saved. Now you see how I drag it and bring it to the side. You see that little blue line. When I drop it, it goes back to the side and it's safe. 
I'm going to click on the double arrow and make it just one column. Same things are available here. If you click those three dots, you still have all the tools and we're going to keep it here. Now, you see that if I keep my mouse on the arrow at the moment, it doesn't give me any tips on what anything is. So we're going to bring in the tool tips. And in order to do that, Illustrator, Preferences, General, Show Tooltips. And now when you come here, it shows you the shortcut of the tool and the name of the tool. So you know what they are and how you can access them quickly. Now, if you do Selection Tool, if you click V, it does the Selection Tool. If you want the Direct Selection Tool, Instead of having to click here, once you know it, you click A and it's your direct selection tool. And you can get to learn all the shortcuts of every one of your tools by doing that. Now, if you are new to Adobe Illustrator, there is an even better tooltip called Rich Tooltip. You go to Adobe Illustrator's Preferences and again, General. And right under Show Tooltips, you can click on Show Rich Tooltips. You press OK. And now what it does is when you go over, it shows you a little graphic animation that explains how the tool is used. So that's how you use the selection tool. And if you click on learn more, it actually gives you a little bit more information and you can follow up. And that's a really nice way to learn the basics of Adobe Illustrator. You can do the same thing with every one of the tools. Now, after a while, once you know Adobe Illustrator, you may want to remove it because it can be kind of in your way and you don't need it, you don't need it. But at the very beginning, it's good to have that just so you get a basic idea of what the tools are and it gives you a quick link to learn more and to find out how that tool is used. We're gonna go back here to the tools more tools. Well, the tools are here to help you with selecting, drawing, painting, editing, viewing, fill and stroke, drawing modes, and screen modes. And they all have specific functions. The basic tools, let's drag this, put it into a double column. The basic tools are the selection tool here. Okay, so let's, let me go to preferences, general, and remove the ridge tool tips for now, so that you get an idea. This is the selection tool. This is the direct selection tool, the pen tool, the curvature tool, the rectangle tool, paint brush tool, rotate tool and type tool. This is pretty much what we're going to go over. If I want to do text, Paris, and we're gonna make it white. If I want to use rectangle tool, oops, and this is now this color. I can come here and change it to white on black. Now we're gonna check out real quick the properties panel, which is important. In order to open your panels, you click on the double line here. Same thing with the panel that's right here. Now, as you can see, the properties panel is not here at the moment, or I'm not finding it. So what I do is I come to Window and I'm going to go to Properties. As you can see, it is not open. It doesn't have a mark in front of it. So poof, I'm going to open my Properties panel and that's where it is. In order for it to come into my other panels, I'm going to take it, drag it, and I want it next to Transform and Align. You see that blue square? I'm going to add it here. I'm gonna take it and put it in the front this way. Now I have my properties and I can drag this up or down so I have all the information in view. The 
properties panel has all the information, the appearance options. So if you click on Paris, it gives you the characters and everything you need. If you click on your rectangle, it shows you the things that can affect your rectangle. And if you were to have anything else, it would give you the appearance here. You can also have the effects right from the properties panel. And so you want to make sure that you keep an eye on that panel. Your panel gives you quick access to tools and options. You go to your Windows menu, make sure there is a check mark. Uh, in the Windows menu, you will see all your panels are listed in alphabetical order. And if they don't have a check mark, that means they are not open. So if you want to open any one of them, you just click on it. You see your gradient is now open. And you can collapse your panels by clicking on those double arrows or opening them by clicking on the arrows. However, after a while, if you open too many of them, it takes away from the space of your artwork. So it's a very good habit to just close them if you're not using them so that you can take particular attention to your artwork and artboard. You can move and dock your panels the same way you did with your tool. So we're going to open this if you want to take the character and move it out, you can do so. If you want to move the paragraph and move it, you can do so. If you want to bring the paragraph into the character, you bring it close to it. You wait until you see the blue square around that panel and you release it. And now they are together. If you want to move them in a different order, you just drag them around. Now, if you want to move that into this window, you can decide where it goes. Just follow that blue square. If you want it to be next to comments, poof, it comes here. So let's say that you really are happy with the way you moved all your panels and your tools and you have them just the way you want. You can come here to window, workspace and new workspace. You come here, you name it, whatever you want, your first name, your panel and you press OK. I'm going to press cancel. But as you can see here, I have workspace and this is Katya and that's my workspace. This is the, the way I like to work. So you are going to go back to layout for the time being. But that's how you can save your own workspace so that you have everything you need exactly where you want them. All right, the panel options. Let's go, for example, to the layered panel. You're going to click on these lines here and you see at the very bottom it says panel options and you show here layers only. You can show the row size in small, medium, large or other and then you pick the exact pixel you want. So let's say, for example, right now it's set on medium. Let's go for large. And you want your thumbnails to be layers, top level groups and objects. You can pretty much modify it the way you like. So we're going to show the large version and that will be the setup for my panel. The reason why I don't use that is I want to be able to see things on my screen. So now if I do that, it takes all my space. So I go back and go to the panel options and make it medium. OK. And you see how now I can see everything because it quickly goes and uses all the space you have. So that's my preference. Another thing is that you can adjust your interface brightness. You see how everything is gray here. I can go to Illustrator preferences and user interface. If you want it white, light gray, medium gray or black. Canvas color, match user interface brightness or white. Auto collapse, open document as tabs, large tabs. You can adjust your interface brightness right there. So let's say if we want it to go with a light gray and press OK. Now you see how everything turned light gray. If you want to change it again, go to Preferences. 
user interface and I like it darker and we're going to press OK and now this is the way it looks. Okay, let's view the artwork settings. The important shortcuts is command minus to minimize the artwork, command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. On PC it would be alt, apple plus zoom in, apple minus zoom out, apple zero will take you to the full view and if you have multiple windows to fit all of them it's alt control zero and that will be for when you have multiple artboards. You can also rotate your artboard 90 degrees. Now if I were to do an illustration I want to rotate now, just so you know, this does not affect your artwork. It's just what you see so that you can modify things. You get close to something, you can rotate it. And it's all here. You go back to zero degrees and that's the way your art is again. A good shortcut to know also is H. This is the hand tool. If you don't remember H for hand, you can always come here and you find the little hand here and if you look at the tool, it says hand tool H. So we're going to click on it and what it does is it allows you to pan your artboard. Now let's say for example Apple Plus we're zooming in and I'm dragging here. Let's say I want to get close. You see here there is a problem. I can move this a little bit and then I'm done. I press H again and I can move on. I see here there is a little problem with this as well, so I'm going to bring this up. H, I'm moving it again here, and you see there is a problem with the size here, so I'm going to move this up as well, up. And this is pretty much how you can go to every little detail of your art by just dragging things around with your hand tool. It's really helpful. Another very good shortcut is, okay, let's see for example, uh, this let's say you see I want Paris to be in dark blue and I want it to be here and I was working on my art and I can't find the text that goes in that box. Well, in I could go to the layers and try to find it that way but there is really a quick way also is to use the outlines. The outline view is a great tool to find objects that are not visible, that are hidden, to find fonts or to find extra items that you may not want in your art. If you want you can go to view and outline. As you can see it's Apple Y. So we're going to click on outline. And you see you have a little circle here, you have Paris here, photo here, you see a whole bunch of stuff. Now the good thing is you can go to your layers now. It's already, we're going to drag this down. You see Paris, you want it to be on top. And then we're going to press Apple Y and you see that Paris has come up. Now we're going to do Apple Y again and I'm going to look at this circle because I don't know what that thing is. Why is there a circle here? Let's do Apple Y again and now I know that this circle is somewhere around here. So it's part of this graphic. So I don't use it so that's not really necessary. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to actually delete that layer and you see that it has been cleaned up and then you go around you get to see all the details you see this is not visible on the actual screen but it's there if, so if I want to clean up my art I go here and I delete that layer as well and you get to see everything you are not able to see with your eyes. See photo here, I'm also going to remove it. 
I find it on the radio panel, and I'm going to delete that. Apple, Y, and now I have my artboard, and I know where everything is. So that's a really good tool. View outlines can help you see things that your eyes may not be able to see and uh, move things around as you need. So now you have it. You know exactly how your workspace is in Adobe Illustrator in 2022. You know where your tools are, you know where your panels are, you, you know where to change them, you know how to upgrade them, you know how to change their options, you know about the properties panel, you know the name of all the sections of your artboard, you know the hand tool, you know how to zoom in, zoom out, and this, my friend, is gonna help you a lot when you start working in Adobe Illustrator. It doesn't look like much, but these tools are gonna be the back end of your work. You're going to be using them all the time. So it's good to spend a few minutes just to get comfortable with where everything is and how everything is used. And you will see you will be using it without even thinking about it. Apple V, Apple Plus, Apple Minus, H. That's super important stuff to know. I hope you learned a few things. Please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think of Adobe Illustrator and the tools you just learned today. Let me know if there's anything you're not understanding and you want a little bit more clarity about. I'll be more than happy to help you. Have a beautiful rest of the day. See you.